All right, so we saw some pictures online. So let me clarify. And the pictures stated that CBN had banned Paystack <laughs> and, other, <laughs> and others from providing BBN vali validation services for customers. Another one says, you guys said fintech is the new oil. You now have their attention. That's speaking to the, gov the, the government that we have their attention. And someone else said, anytime this fintech announces new strides, I just know that CBN will come up with a way to frustrate them. Some of these were the reactions that we saw trailing the CBN um, BVN verification ban that is trending online. Although CBN is yet to make an official statement, this clearly caught our attention. And since it's our Friday that we talk about businesses, fintech, economy, we thought it would be nice to understand what this means to us, you know, as Nigerians, the economy, and if it is true, will it be a setback or um, is CBN on track with this ban? Now, in another news, in a circular release by the Nas Nigerian Capital Market Regulator um, SEC today, investment platform providing access to foreign securities might be tre treading on dangerous grounds, according to SEC regulators that have just been brought to light. These platforms are trading foreign securities not registered in the country and have been warned to stop doing so. Capital market operators in partnership with them have also been warned to renege on providing brokerage services for foreign securities. Now, this is quite tricky. You know, it's very tricky because I don't understand. But <laughs> I would definitely love to hear what Rutu Sodiri has to say. Now, <laughs> Rutu Ray Rutu Sodiri is a 10-year 10 10 -year business media veteran who hosts the Global Business Report on Arise TV. He also hosts um, Business Express on Smooth FM 98.1, wrote as a free market capitalist and technology advocate. When he isn't in front of the television, cameras, or behind a radio microphone discussing capital markets and economics, he is hosting webinars for tech and banking industry. So he is the perfect guest. In case there's anybody that CBN will hold, he will be there. <laughs> <laughs> and he's joined us tonight. Ah. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> now, please let us know what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 So, Rotus, because we ran out of time, we're not even going to do our initial banter. Well, we'll just come straight to you. Yeah. Because um, the truth is, when I saw this thing, I said, which can will be this again? And right. let me tell you, especially the one on the email that um, Paystack released. Right. Everybody, I mean, Tammy was the, one of our co-anchors. She's a finance expert. She, she's all the way, you know, uh, uh, somewhere. Right. And she sends a message out. What kind of wahala is this one? <laughs> Are we cursed in this country? Is this a demonic? And like everybody is reacting to this. It's right. almost like everybody's looking at it that this is a big setback, you know, for fintech businesses. Is this right. even true? Well, so the thing is, we haven't heard officially from the regulator, right? And the thing is, if you are already on these platforms, then you have nothing to worry about. So if you're already a Paystack customer or whichever other fintech, you're good because you've already been onboarded. What that email was saying was that third-party non-bank institutions cannot do BVN validation. So if a new person is coming to open an account, they will not be able to submit a BVN and do a check. It's KYC, know your customer, whether yeah. they can come on, right? So it's a setback because now that halts new, um, getting on board new customers who mm. want to buy, um, uh, do business with them. However, the reason why I'm pleading <laughs> for uh, calm is that the, the regulator has to say something, right? It's the regulator is the overseer, right? Who is, the, who is going to lay the law and say this is what we're doing right now, either in a tweet or in a statement, or a press release, release, or something. So they haven't said anything, I mean, but it is the duty of the fintech companies to say, hey, come on, you're my customer, this is what is happening. All of a sudden, you can't, we've, we've gotten word that we can't onboard third party people. So that, that did have, you know, you've been floating all the tweets. It's uh, a lot of folks are right to be upset, because how can you just wake up one morning and then say people can't onboard um, UBVN checks. The central bank said that bank verification numbers are supposed to be the main source of identification. Compulsory. Uh, compulsory, right. So, you know, that was, so, I, so it's confusing. Hopefully on Monday or something, or they will release a tweet or let us give us some more um, um, information or maybe say it's a false alarm. But for now, yeah, it's, it's, you know, but if unless you have not yet for new, brand new folks, those are the ones that have to worry. If you're already onboarded, you're good. Okay, so, so let me go to AK. Okay. <laughs> let me even jump to something. I was going to ask a question, but I'll jump to something. Do you think that CBN needs to improve the way it communicates? Because I am just thinking, mm. we shouldn't hear from Paystack right. first. Right. 
do they owe us that duty? Because see all this pandemonium, and everybody trying to interpret, people are saying bans, people saying suspension. What is their role? Because it's driving me crazy. Correct. You have a right to be upset <laughs> and to be frustrated. They do have a communication issue. And why should they? They got the Twitter account. The governor of the central bank is constantly, he was in Kebi, he's been in Nassau, other places, promoting their Anko Boras program for agriculture. So when the government wants to tell you something, they're happy to jump out and tell you. So if for issues like this, uncertainty affects investments, uncertainty affects business decisions, exactly. right? Exactly. So yeah, you're correct. They do, they sh right now they should have jumped up and said, look, oh, this is what it is. There's no, don't worry about it. Or explain or tell us. As in when, right. when we started the show and the band, and I, and no, I, I think I took a story about um, them suspending 197 business accounts. For yes. foreign exchange infractions, yes. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, some of those things you need to communicate, especially in the light of financial literacy. And all of us are saying, you know, people need to be more informed so that they cannot be susceptible to all the things that are happening. Because people and fraudsters, you know, just jump on those on these, loopholes right. and then they begin to do things. Correct. And you have all the power. Is it please go now? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, hey, again, you have, you have your right to be, okay. to, be, to be frustrated. Like it is frustrating. Okay. Yeah, yeah. For, uh, um, let me look at it from a layman's point of view. Of course. View, basically, what does this really entail? It, will this attract investments to Nigeria or okay. will it um, ban investments in Nigeria? Yeah, so I'm, I'm careful not to use the word ban, right? Yes. So, because there's no, no, there's we no, actually there's no... played on the word ban. Right, yeah, yeah, okay, we we the uh, for you. okay, okay, cool. <laughs> so, the thing is, right now, it's not encouraging because if you are looking to partner with a fintech or say you want to get, you know, because Nigeria has such a large population of people exactly. and so there are a lot of businesses looking to come in here, payment services and, you know, uh, yeah, quick loans and so on and so forth. Yeah. So it's not encouraging for them, right, for, to yeah. see this kind of thing. They want certainty. They want to know everything is clear. Yeah. So, yeah, the answer is it's not, it's not encouraging. So, again, wow. the regulator has to come out and just say, hey, look, this is what is happening. Everybody calm down and then you know, carry on with your business. So I know that we already have a, an identity problem which affects um, financial inclusion. Right. You know. Now, there's this school of thought that is saying the reason why this is happening is so that they can rule out the NIA. NI NI but do you think we're ready? Do we have APIs? So today, if you stop BVN, are we ready to take on a new form? They, 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 I will be shocked if they stop BVN because I know they want to make the NIN the primary source, but they remember when the BVN came out, they exactly. promoted it heavily, said everybody had to get it. So, I mean, <laughs> you're reversing a whole lot of work if you re if you say you're stopping the BVN. I don't think it's... Look, the NIN thing, there was an own goal where they told people during COVID-19 to go and pack yourselves inside different centers to go and register. They should have allowed the telcos to lead, which they did after a while. They, they now said you could go to your um, respective telecom telecommunications office and go and register. So yeah, they want to make the NIN the primary source, but I do not believe it is going to lead to us neglecting or negating the, the, uh, the BVN. So how is this going to affect financial inclusion? Because the banks themselves cannot mm. tackle this giant. Right, right. So if this, let's assume that tomorrow mm. something happens and they say, okay, fine, really, FinTech, this is not a suspension, right. it's a complete ban. What do you think our progress on financial inclusion is going to be? So they are not, they, they, they target, okay, they moved the goalpost for financial inclusion. It was 80% um, as of 2019. Now they've moved it to 95% in 2023. I think only about 60% um, of the population is financially included. So you've got another 40% that's not. Now, in my opinion, the telcos should be driving this because there are more subscribers, more telco subscribers than there are BBNs. BBN, yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't know if you saw the little tiff with MTN and yeah, the banks, yeah. right? So, <laughs> you know, the, the, the banks are afraid that a, a, a huge company like an MTN and other telcos will do what's happening in um, with M-Pesa and Safaricom in Kenya, in Kenya, where even buying granots is through your phone yeah. credit. They don't even take cash, right? So financial inclusion as far as, it's a setback to answer your question, but if we want to push forward with it, I believe it should they should they should find a way to cooperate. I know the banks are worried and that the telcos could take over, but find a way to cooperate because they both need each other. But it should be telco driven. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so Rotus, I was going to ask you that you know because now we're looking at all of these things and it seems like 
for me, I think most times when I see things like this, it's just like with the Bitcoin and everything, I just feel like CBN do not, they don't understand right. where the future of finance is going mm, to. Mm, that's so help me yeah. help them to understand. Because, <laughs> no, it's true because at some point, it's like we take 10 steps forward. Like, look at what somebody said when that person tweeted about is the new oil. We know that this thing has the capacity. I mean, just when did we announce Unicorn for Tesla? Yes, yeah, Flutter Wave. Oh, for I mean, Flutter Wave, wave sorry, for yes. Flutter, right, Flutter right, Wave. Right, right. Would they be giving Giving him unicorn if there's no investment. There's something in that space that is bigger than everybody. And it, I mean, the only reasonable thing you should do yeah. as a body is to try to understand it and Correct. see how, because I still feel you've not found a way to make money from that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so okay. just help me understand it yeah. because I don't think they have a, a clarity, they have clarity on, you know, what fintech is supposed to look like. Right. The funny thing is your point about taking 10 steps forward and then back. The central bank back in 2017, 2018, they held a, they invited people. I, I attended. There was a, a little uh, forum they had in that office in Marina, uh, Marina near the stock exchange. They had fintech people tell because they were like, want to understand Bitcoin, want to see what's going on. Yeah. I don't know what happened. Maybe it's because of the FX challenges with the recession, and they were, they were worried that you know, with people going towards um, uh, Bitcoin and so on that deviates from them getting remittances in dollars into the country or with the whole NSARS thing remember there was the um feminist what's that co the feminist coalition feminist coalition they so broke they, 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 they banned the account and then they now use crypto to uh, get money yeah. in so there's, there's a security angle so i think they are trending towards the security side of things where they're saying well we don't want money laundering or drug pushing and all that all those things but so yeah they, they are not as forward-looking as other countries. The UK, they are taxing crypto. If you make purchases and buy crypto, the UK and the other governments, are they'll collect taxes from it and make money. So, you know, I, I don't know. I think it's a bit of, um, they're a bit afraid of what That's it means. What the, the NSARS protest, I think, scared them. It scared it, them, it, it, you know, and because they are on a, they, 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 are not, they, are, they have allowed themselves not to understand mm. what this space looks like. I think right. that is why all, some of these things are happening. Just before you came, we were talking about, you know, having a body that checks mates CBN. Because at this, we've got it all. Yeah, because we've got it. We've got it to that. Yeah, we've got to that point, uh, Rotus, where it seems the like powers. they are the judge and they are the jury. Everything. Right, Do you right. understand? We need to be able to let them understand that there are certain kinds of decisions where you take it, it cripples your economy. Right. You right, know, a right. lot of this, the future for, for Nigeria, especially mm -hmm. our economy, is going to be in the financial tech space. Correct. That's so correct. if you the keep on taking, advanced, yes, actually. Mm. you know, if you keep on taking these steps that mm. takes us backward, then we will never grow. Correct. You know, so how can we, I mean, maybe we'll so find a body. I, I, the thing <laughs> is, we have a universal banking system. So unfortunately, the CBN is the be-all and end-all when it comes to the financial space. So it would take a brand new government and a new form and a change to the constitution and all those things in order to get another body to checkmate them. So that's the thing. Another thing, I'm speculating here, it could be the elections coming up and the funding that's going to be going in there. So that maybe that's why all this, you know, because we've got, or oh, you guys have already been there, you've gone there already. Yeah. I always say, she says, she says I'm, a, I'm a conspiracy, a conspiracy theorist. theorist. I'm, just, I'm just, you know, because it's weird. When you just wake up and you start trying to it cut is. off all these avenues for funding and money to move around, who knows? It could be fear towards how we can fund who in the election. So, I, you know, but again, what we need is clarity and hopefully maybe monday or even we over the we weekend we get, get a tweet and we get some clarity and from this, them. Okay. okay and if this actually happens and uh, we all know that um, the smes are actually the the bedrock the drivers, of the, yeah. the drivers of the economy yeah. so um with what has happened if it happens mm. basically um what's the effect on smes Ooh, wow i mean onboarding you can't onboard new smes a lot of these businesses a lot of these fintechs are b2b which is mm -hmm. business to business, business to so business. um okay so i thought we we're going on zoom before i, I came <laughs> here so i topped up i topped up my wi-fi and okay. i did it through a secure channel through one of these fintech companies so okay. your, your wi-fi payments your booking trips you just think of any any logistics or data -day. anything that has to do with ease of doing business thank you they they facilitate that so if you're not going to you know um if you if you cut off channels the way you can add more of them to your platform then you're holding back um progress of smes yeah. okay you okay. know what let's let's take so it <laughs> let's go and drink water and come back ah no we have to drink water and come back we'll be right back stay with us <laughs>